So we are about to talk to Carrie Bean, a mission operations engineer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for NASA and the Dawn mission to Ceres. If you'd like to follow Carrie on Twitter, her Twitter handle is at Planetary Carrie, which you can find below. Now, here she is calling us now. Howdy. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us today. Um, yeah, no. My name's Peter, um, and we are making a show, like I said, called Above and Below, um, and we were looking to get your insights into the Dawn mission, um, mm -hmm. if, if that's okay with yourself. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll start off just by saying, um, what is your background, and what is your role in the Dawn mission itself to Ceres? Yeah. So my role is science planning and sequencing on Dawn, and basically the, the best way to describe my job is that I'm a translator and I translate between the science team and the engineering team. So the scientists need certain types of pictures and certain types of data to do their work, and so my team, uh, the science operations team, we come together, we kind of translate what does that actually mean, how many pictures, and work with the engineers to write the code that actually goes to the spacecraft to take the pictures that the scientists need. So it's, it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So can you explain to us a little about the Dawn mission itself and what are NASA looking to get um, out of the whole thing? Yeah. So the Dawn mission is basically going to the dawn of the solar system. And the asteroids in the asteroid belt are kind of the leftover building blocks of our solar system. And so Dawn is basically a detective and we're going back to, to try and figure out how the solar system was formed. Wow. Sounds, it sounds really fun and interesting then. Awesome. Um, so with regards to, say, the actual um, craft itself, um, the dimensions and the weight of the spacecraft, they're very specific. Um, how is the size and weight determined? And also, is it based on where it's going or the time it's traveling? Can you tell us about the, the orbiter itself? So each mission has to, it has a whole bunch of science requirements. You have to be able to do certain amounts of things. And once you know what you need to do, then you design the spacecraft to do it. Um, so the two most interesting uh, facts about the Dawn spacecraft are really its solar panels and its ion engines. So I'll talk first about the solar panels. So as you can imagine, we're going out in the asteroid belt. There's not as much sunlight there as there is on Earth. So you need really big solar panels to be able to do your work. So our solar panels, the width is actually the same width as a singles tennis court. Wow. And at the time that we launched, we were the longest tip-to-tip -tip spacecraft that had uh, ever been launched. Um, unfortunately, the Juno spacecraft to Jupiter beat us out because, as you can imagine, at Jupiter, they need even bigger solar panels. Um, so um, the other uh, part that is really crucial to Dawn is our ion engines. And this relies on the basic physics principle is that if you throw something one way, you go a little bit in the other direction. And so that's basically what we're doing. We're taking xenon ions and we are throwing them out of the engine. And the thrust is very gentle. It's about the equivalent to a sheet of paper on your hand. So it's a very light thrust and it, to get from zero to 100 kilometers per hour would take you about four days. Wow. However, if you're constantly thrusting, which we've been doing for over seven years now, you can get an immense amount of change in your velocity. And so Dawn is for patient people, but <laughs> it's also very efficient. So um, because of that, um, we're able to use just 425 kilograms of xenon to able to visit these two different bodies. If we were to use a normal chemical propulsion engine, like most spacecraft use, it would just be thousands and thousands of kilograms, and it would just not be very efficient. Uh, so it, really, the ion engine is crucial being able to complete Dawn's mission. Wow, OK. Um, so the end of the primary mission is next year, um, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and in the three years of data that you've collected so far, do you think um, it's a huge step forward? and? Do you think there'll be another mission to follow it? Yeah, so Dawn has been an incredibly successful mission so far. In 2011 and 2012, we orbited the asteroid Vesta, and it was a hugely successful mission. You can see behind me some of the results uh, from Vesta, and scientists are still poring over the data and publishing results, and they will for years to come. And so now that we're approaching Ceres, 
it's just going to be so similar to Vesta in that we're going to have so much beautiful data to look at for such a long time. Um, this is really the largest object left in our asteroid belt, or in our asteroid belt in our inner solar system that we haven't explored. Um, and it's also the first time we've ever visited a dwarf planet. So we're really going to get a good look at these dwarf planets and then kind of see um, these bodies that didn't quite make it into the planet. <laughs> well, a lot of people are interested in the bright lights on Ceres. Can you give us a little bit more information about those? Unfortunately, we just don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> that's part of the fun about science. Uh, we, you know, there's so many theories, and soon we'll find out. Um, Soon enough, you know, Dawn will be getting closer and we're going to get some gorgeous data of the entire planet, including those bright spots. Um, what we know so far is that uh, a couple years ago, the Herschel Space Observatory, which is an ESA mission, actually saw water vapor coming away from Ceres, and it's tied to the bright spots. It also is coming from other locations, but one in particular is that we've seen water vapor coming out of the, the area where the bright spots are. So something is going on there. Um, and we've also seen these bright spots for a while. Uh, Hubble took a whole bunch of pictures of Ceres in 2003 and 2004, and we actually saw the bright spots then. So we've known about them for a while. Um, they're just really interesting, and they really <laughs> stand out. And uh, also the other uh, interesting thing about the images is that Ceres is actually really dark. The, the average surface brightness is about the equivalent of fresh asphalt. And so these bright spots, even though they look like they're pure white, bright and, and saturate the image, they're probably about as bright as faded asphalt. So even though they look really bright in the images, they're not actually as bright. Oh. Um, so as Dawn gets closer, we'll, we're going to have a couple different orbits that eventually will get us to just 375 kilometers above the surface of Ceres. And so once we get to that point, we're going to have some gorgeous data to look at. And how long does that data take to get from, from Ceres to Earth? Right now, uh, one way lifetime is about 30 minutes. So when we sit there and we're, we're telling the spacecraft what to do, we usually tell it several days at a time just because of the delay. So uh, we have dedicated times. We use the deep space network to communicate with the spacecraft. And we know when to listen, and it knows when to send data. And then it takes 30 minutes for that image to come all the way back from Ceres to Earth. Wow. Well, thank you so much for this. Um, so just finally, what um, has your experience been of the entire mission? And um, what are you expecting to find out from all of this data then? Yeah. So I joined this mission actually after VESTA. Uh, I came in during the cruise from VESTA to Ceres. And so we did a lot of prep work in that meantime to prepare for our Ceres mission. Um, we built our sequences in advance. We done as much prep as we possibly could. And so now we're really, uh, it's, it's really fun to see it being executed now instead of planning and thinking about it for so long. Now we'll actually see the images coming back and, and have some real data to work with. Wow. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us. Um, we're really excited about all of this and um, we wish you the best of luck with the rest of the mission. Hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.